Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Makusaba Kadiba and Hande Kani and Osa Kira Masina and Mahande of Asti Kadiba Makureva Sina and Neandoso. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. A good Friday to you all. Good Friday to you, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, love bag. Good morning, perks. Good morning, Nalidzi. Good morning, Francina. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Flo. Good morning, Dorito. Dorito, good morning. Good morning, Ritzy. Good morning, Morning Man. God bless you, everybody. Good morning, Mamoyo. It's wonderful to see you here. Shy, good morning. I'm sure Linda is also here. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy, happy, happy. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday. Today is a good Friday. We're calling today a good Friday. The good Friday that gave us Freedom Friday. Ha! Huh. Now look at that. The good Friday that gave us a Freedom Friday. The good Friday, which is the reason why we have Freedom Fridays on this broadcast. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Happy Good Friday, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, 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 everybody. It's wonderful to see you all here this morning. Happy Good Friday. Happy Good Friday. Happy Good Friday, everybody. It's wonderful to see you here. Thank you to the nine people that have shared the broadcast so far. God bless you so very much. Sashoy, thank you so much. Sashoy just became a 10-month subscriber. Sasha is like, I don't want to have to remember for the next 10 months. I don't have to, I don't want to remember for the next 10 months. So let's just sort it out for the next 10 months. She's like, listen, woman of God, I don't, I don't want to keep remembering this thing. <laughs> so that's something you are also capable of doing. Um to subscribe in advance. Happy Freedom Friday, everybody. Welcome to this live broadcast this morning. Um, God is so good. God is so kind. Giving us an opportunity to just pray um, on this holiday before many of you go to your local churches for the word. Um, and I thought it important today to just align our time of prayer with what is currently happening in the atmosphere. What is currently happening in the season. Um, I thought it would be a wonderful idea for us to just uh, slowly dip our feet into the atmosphere uh, of the season. And we know that on Good Friday, this is the, the, the Friday that our Lord Jesus Christ is crucified. Um, and so I thought it would be a great idea for us to just focus a scripture that is close to that context. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. So my ministration today is going to be called to be more like Christ. I don't know if there's anybody here who's just saying, I want to be more like Christ. If I could be, if I could be half of what Christ was. Hello, somebody. If I could just, if I could, if I could be just a little bit of what Jesus was on this earth. If I, if I could if I could align my life, if God could give me the grace to just align my life and be more like Jesus, more like Jesus, more like Jesus, that's my heart's desire. That's my heart's desire. I don't know about you, but there comes a time when you realize that everything else is vanity 
and in whatever you are doing, whether it's in, in the corporate space, whether it's, it's, it's the very thing that feeds your family, to just be more like Christ, to just be more like Christ, to model Christ, to, to model Christ in whatever place God has planted you. So that's going to be our heart's desire and our prayer point this morning. And I want us to, to turn into a scripture um, that I sort of touched on a little bit um, a couple of days ago. And we're in the book of Luke 22, verse 47. We're in the book of Luke 22, uh, verse 40. We're going to start from verse 47. And it is the betrayal of Jesus. This is the time when Jesus is betrayed and he is handed over um, to those that wanted to kill him. So this is the time when Jesus is betrayed and he is handed over to those that sought his life. And the saddest thing about this situation is that the man that betrays Jesus is one of his own. The man that betrays Jesus is one of his own inner circle closest disciples. Somebody that Jesus had walked with. Somebody that Jesus had given his shoulder to lie on. Somebody that Jesus had taken a moment to mentor. Have you ever mentored somebody and then all of a sudden, every single thing you, you every single value you gave to them, they take all the value you gave them. They run with it, never mention your name. And in any instance, they mention your name. They mention it to despise. Somebody says, yo, it hurts. That's right. Have you ever given your life to somebody, invested your life for someone, sacrificed many of your privileges and your advantages? Some of you sacrificed platforms for someone gave opportunities that could have earned you an income that could have increased your net worth that could have increased your bank account balance and you gave them to somebody that needed them only to have them betray you somebody says that happened to me, that happens to me all the time that you would invest your life and you would invest your time your talent your treasures a time many people are grappling for, time many people, are, time that you e invoice. You know, it's when you, you have an invoicing system for your consultations and you give your consultation free of charge to somebody. And then they take that time of consultation, never, never acknowledge you. Anytime they're acknowledging, they're acknowledging somebody else. It's not you. Anytime they're giving credit for the very same things you taught them, they're giving somebody else. It ain't you. <laughs> somebody says, that's me investing my life into a relationship. Can't you? <laughs> Can't you? Have you ever given your life to somebody? Have you ever been vulnerable to someone? Have you ever opened up your heart to somebody? Have you ever given your ear to somebody? Given your life to someone? Allowed someone access into your inner space. Some of you allowed people into your homes. And you don't do that. That's not what you do. That's not what you do. You, you're not in the habit of giving people access to your own home. And some of these things, these people ended up causing some of the most profound frustrations in your marriages. Some of the most profound frustrations in your ministries. That's right. You, 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 you bring someone in and they cause chaos. You bring someone in, they destabilize the stability of your business. Before you know it, everybody that you had employed and groomed and, 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 and raised up and mentored hates you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of your friends are now looking at you with a side eye because somebody came and poisoned the water in the well. 
somebody poisoned the water in the well. So we're finding that the man that comes and betrays Jesus today has a track record of doing what he has been, what he has done to what he's about to do today. Scripture tells us that when the woman with the alabaster jar came and she poured her perfume on Jesus' feet. The Bible says that Judas began to whisper to the other disciples. They always begin whispering until they start shouting. They always begin whispering until they bring a, 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 a crowd and kiss you. Not as a sign of love, but as a sign of betrayal. Until the very end, they are two-faced. Until the very end, some people that don't understand what's happening in the atmosphere still think they love you. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. There were people who, who in the crowd did not understand and appreciate what had taken place, the transaction that had taken place with that kiss. These people are so skilled that some of them up until the very end, there are people willing to defend that it wasn't them that betrayed you. It wasn't them that betrayed you. You must be talking about somebody else. It can't be them. You must be talking about some, someone else. It can't be your husband. He was too good, good for you. Too good to you. You can't be talking about that friend of yours. She's such a believer. You know, she's a woman of God. That tongue speaking one. Up until the very end, they maintain a mask. They maintain a facade. If people cannot pick things up in the spirit, they will continue to defend them until the end. That's right. And then they go around and they blame you for what happened. Somebody in the comment section says, and then they end up blaming you. My God, my God, my God. Somebody says, I know exactly what you're talking about. Until the very end, they wear a mask. And they start by whispering. At the beginning, it's a whisper. The Bible says, a, 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 the woman with the alabaster jar comes and she breaks a perfume worth a year's wages on Jesus' feet. And the Bible says that Judas was grieved. That's right. Linda says they act as victims. <laughs> they acted until the very end. Some of you will never know. Some of you will continue to defend them. You can't be talking about that friend of yours. She just hosted an event two weeks ago where she was laying hands on other people and, and, and ministering deliverance. You can't be talking about this friend of yours. She sounds so sweet online. She looks like she's such a girl, girl's girl online. She can't be the one that stole your business and betrayed you and opened a new company with the exact same business idea. Betrayers will keep their facade and they will maintain their facade until the very end. Judas chose a kiss for a reason. So, G so Judah started with whispers. The Bible says he whispered and he said, why would this woman waste this oil on Jesus? Why would this woman waste this oil on Jesus? Why couldn't we take this oil and uh, why couldn't we sell it? And why couldn't we keep the money in the coffers and feed the poor? They always are counting your pockets. They count your pockets. They are counting your pockets. I, 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 I love my husband. I love my husband. My husband always says, you don't want a friend that counts your pockets. A friend who counts your pockets is the one that wants to know how much you earn. And the reason they want to know how much you earn is because they don't want to pray for you. No, they want to know how much they can get out of what you earn. They want to know what they can benefit out of it. The Bible then says it was because Judas was in the habit of taking money out of Jesus' coffers. Taking money out of ministry coffers. So his concern, the betrayer's concern is not, is never concern. The betrayer's concern is always an effort to protect their interest. God bless you, Tiniko. Tiniko said, for the next seven months, I don't want to, I don't want to keep coming here and subscribing. So, so they just said, subscribe for the next seven months. God bless you, Tiniko. Anytime the betrayer is, 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 is raising concerns, some part of that concern has to do with keeping, maintaining, and protecting their own interest. The Bible says, Judah said, why are we, why are we wasting this oil on Jesus? 
The betrayer never understands prophetic moments. The betrayer never understands that the oil is not just oil. This woman is indicating it is a sign. It is a token of the things to come. Uh, this woman is enacting what is going to happen when Jesus dies. And the women come with spices and oil to anoint him. The, 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 the betrayer is never in the spirit. They are never in the spirit with your vision. They are never in sync with you at a spiritual level. It's always at a carnal, financial, transactional level. The betrayer never understa fully understands your vision. If you've ever been in business with a person that ended up betraying you, when you really look in hindsight, you will notice and acknowledge that these people never believed you were called into business. These people never believed you were doing business with God. These people never believed that you were anything special in business. These people never believed there was anything special about your particular business. They just believed it was a business idea and you were a clever person and they could utilize you as a resource. The, the, the betrayer is never in sync with the vision on a prophetic level. I can, I can really begin to look at my friendships, the ones that I no longer am in. And I can look at the people and I can appreciate that the people that left are the people that never really accepted me as a minister. They never really accepted my ministry. They never really accepted my calling. They never ever at any point in time spoke to me as a minister. They didn't have the wisdom. You know, there are people in my life right now that have mastered the art of knowing when I'm speaking as melody and when I'm speaking as a woman of God. And I don't need to tell them when I've switched. I had an encounter recently with a friend and, and a conversation happened when I, when I discerned and deciphered that this person from the very beginning has never taken me as a minister. And it is very dangerous as a minister to keep people around you that only know you as a resource. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know why I'm here. I wasn't even planning on it. But let's let's get there for the next couple of minutes. Uh, there, are, there are certain people that, that don't have the wisdom to, to, to switch and know when you are no longer speaking as you. The Bible says, no, no man after the flesh. Uh, there are people who don't have an ability. I, I, I'm married to a pastor. And because I'm a pastor's wife, I must have the ability to discern when my husband is no longer speaking to me as his baby. Uh, when he's no longer speaking to, to me as, 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 as a friend and a lover. When he's now speaking to me as a voice from heaven. The Bible says Judah saw uh, uh, the woman with the alabaster jar pouring oil on Jesus. And when some people something saw something powerful, when some people saw a beautiful act of love, a, a, a love language before Jesus, when some people saw something supernatural because it was a prophetic moment in time, when this woman was enacting what would happen when Jesus would be crucified and, and the women with the spices and the oil would go and to anoint him, some people saw a prophetic moment, but Jesus saw a Judas saw a waste. Judas saw a waste of resources. Why? Because he had a he had he he, he, he benefited from the money. So he was protecting his own interests. So he started with whispers. The Bible says he began to whisper and say, why did we not just sell this oil and put it in the coffers? And the Bible qualifies that it was because Judas used to help himself in the ministry coffers. And so now we are finding in Luke chapter 22, verse 47, I want you to begin to, to notice what happens when betrayal uh, grows and it matures. The Bible says in Luke chapter 22, verse 47, it says, while he was still speaking, a crowd arrived led by the man called Judas, a man who had walked with Jesus, a man who had slept next to Jesus, and a man who had spent morning till evening with proximity to Jesus and his wisdom and his knowledge. And yet the presence of Jesus never changed Judas' life. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Today we're going to be praying, Lord, make me more like you. Jesus, make me more like you. Prayer governors, number one, do you know that proximity to Christ will never make you like Christ unless you want it to make, make you like Christ? 
prayer governors, do you know that being called by the name Christian will never make you a Christian unless you permit Christ to change you and transform you? Leaders on this broadcast, do you know that being called a deacon, being called an elder, being called a worship team leader will never make you like Christ until you permit him to start molding you into his image? Prayer governors, do you know that starting a church, being a pastor, being an apostle, being a prophet will never make you like Christ until you give him permission to mold you? I want to tell you right now that you could be in proximity with Jesus and yet still be far away from the image of Christ. You could be going to church and yet still be far away from the image of Christ. You could be a leader in your local church and yet still be far away from the image of Christ because it's not your presence in the local church that makes you a Christian. It's not, it's not your presence in the local church that makes you a Christian. People say, I, 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 um, if something if something that's not a car parks in a garage, it doesn't make it a car. Your presence, your proximity in a space doesn't make you the thing that's sold in that place. There's some people that have been going to church for decades, but they've not allowed Jesus healing. His healing anointing, his healing oil to truly heal them and make them whole. So no wonder you've been going to church for a decade, but yet nothing has changed. The way you speak to people hasn't changed. The way you do life hasn't changed. The way you do your marriage hasn't changed. The way you do business hasn't changed. Judas allowed himself to be in the proximity of the Messiah for three years and, and yet nothing changed in him. So in Luke chapter 22, verse 47, we, 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 we see scripture telling us that while he was still speaking, a crowd arrived. And isn't it strange that this crowd is led by Judas? One of the 12 disciples, the Bible says he approached Jesus to kiss him. Woo! He approached Jesus to kiss him. So the man who has been in Jesus' proximity, the man who has been part of Jesus in a circle, approaches Jesus to kiss him. Now the question is, why would, why would Judas approach Jesus to kiss him? Today's scripture is Luke chapter 22 verse 47. We are talking and unpacking the betrayal of Jesus. Now, many of you would say, why would Judas come and kiss Jesus? He could have pointed from far off. If I, if I was the betrayer, God forbid that I be a betrayer on any day. But I want to understand, logically, if somebody is betraying you, they won't be a part of the, of the scheme itself. They won't be in the proximity. They don't want to be known as the person that betrayed their master. In fact, they want another opportunity to be able to do the exact same thing they did to you, to victimize somebody the exact same way they victimized you for money. So it was logical for Judas to not even be a part of the entourage. It was logical for Judas to not be a part of the crowd. But why would Judas go close to Jesus and kiss him? Well, I want you to know what, what many scholars believe. Uh, uh, many scholars believe that the disciples had become so intertwined with Jesus. They had spent so much time with Jesus. They had conversed so much with Jesus that number one, they began to look like Jesus. 
Ay, 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 they, be they began to carry the image of Jesus. They were now image bearers. They began to carry the resemblance of Jesus Christ that Judas understood that if he was to describe G Jesus to the soldiers, if he was to, to describe Jesus to the man he had sold him to, they could miss him and get the wrong person. So Judas risked his own life because the disciples all looked like Jesus. Jesus. Woo! My question to you this morning is, do you look like Jesus? Do you look like Jesus? Ay, 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 ay. Do you look like Jesus? The disciples had caught the mannerisms of Jesus. So Judas couldn't say, if you, if you go there and you see a man who speaks this way, no, the disciples all spoke like Jesus. Uh, uh, they, he couldn't say, if you go there and you see a man who looks this way, no, all of them now carried the image of Jesus. They were now Im image bearers. Jesus had now done his job. By the time Jesus says, it's now time to give up my ghost. It's now time to give up my, my life. He is confident that he has embedded his image into their spirit. He is confident that he's embedded he, the way he speaks into their voice. He is confident that he has been able to allow these people to catch who he was. So Judas had to come and betray Jesus, Jesus with a kiss. He, he, he could have decided to describe who Jesus looked like. He could have decided to give the intelligence of where they would have been. He could have even decided to be a part of the prayer people that were praying before the, before the, the betrayal happened. He could have decided to act as though he was part of the team, but he couldn't. Why? Because every single one of the disciples were image bearers except Judas. Prayer governors, could it be that you could be in your local church, spend the past decade purely doing nothing but pretending to be an image bearer? Judas risks his own reputation. He risks his own life. He comes out of the fold and he goes and he brings back a crowd and he risks kissing Jesus. Because every single one of those disciples were now image bearers. Prayer governors, Jesus came that we would be image bearers. The disciples had learned how to look like Jesus. They, they had learned and caught Jesus' mannerisms. The disciples had learned how to speak like Jesus. Uh, the disciples had truly learned how to model the Messiah. You couldn't step into the 13, 12 disciples. Uh, in fact, you couldn't st step into the 12, 11 disciples and Jesus himself and catch who Jesus was without being told. Without truly le truly spending time intently trying to decipher who the Messiah was because all of them had caught the image of Christ. My question this morning is have you caught the image? Have you caught the image? I remember many moons back, I was still in a uh, varsity. I I'll never forget this moment. Uh, it's happened to me in different various ways. But I, I remember specifically, I was walking from our, 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 our campus. I had spent a lot of time just studying. So I wanted to get into, 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 into the, into, um, uh, one of the shopping malls, which were a few minutes away from our campus. And as I'm walking down, a man approaches me. I, 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 this man approaches me. He, 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 he is busy with something, but he approaches me and he says, uh, uh, woman of God. You know, it was one of those Hail Mary full of grace moments when somebody just comes to you and you're busy minding your own business. And they just say, and he said, woman of God. And he said, the God upon you is so strong. Don't stop doing what you're doing. I was still a student. It wasn't because I was coming out of a, out of a, out, out of a Bentley. Because sometimes people think that uh, 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 people can see the Christ in you by the clothes you're wearing, by the labels you're wearing. Or they can see the Christ in you by the place you stay. Or they can see the Christ in you by the car you're coming out of. Uh, all of those are additional things. They are not necessary. I was, I was a student. I was as broke as broke could be. I was just trying to get out of varsity and I was just trying to, I was just trying to get a degree. Hello, somebody. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, and he says, woman of God, 
And, and when he said woman of God, he had his stature bowed down like that. He said woman of God, the way Nigerians greet each other. I love Nigerians. There's nothing that knows and understands honor than a Nigerian person. I love me, my Nigerian brothers and sisters. You can't tell me anything about those people. I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them. And he said, woman of God, the God upon you is so strong. Please don't stop what you're doing. And it wasn't, it wasn't strange to me because on that particular day, I think I'd been going, I, I, there was a season of my life when I was fasting for life. <laughs> People eat for life. I was fasting for life. I, I, I was fasting until I, I stopped asking God when I'm stopping to fast because it felt like I was fasting more than I was eating. God had me in the season where I was just fasting. I was fasting. I was, I was just fasting and fasting and fasting. I didn't know what it was for. You know, sometimes God will give you a reason why you're fasting. And then there are times when God, God just, he just, you, you were called into a life of fasting. That's why these days I, I live a fasted life. You know, inter, inter, intermittent fasting is, is a part of my lifestyle. I, I generally eat around 11, 12, because that's just a part of my lifestyle. I learned it back then. You know, I, I, I just learned a life of fasting. And I remember that it was a season where I was experiencing a lot of fasts. And, and I remember even on that day, I probably wasn't even eating. But this man saw the image of Christ on me. And he felt compelled to leave the important work he was doing to come and acknowledge the God upon my life. I want to ask you, I, 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 do you carry the image? Do you carry the image? Do you carry his image? Can people ask you, what is it about you? Can people ask you, what is it about you? There's something about you. There is something strange about you. I don't know what it is. There's some people who don't know how to describe what you carry. Some people will say, you know, you just have this beautiful aura <laughs> and in your, in your spirit, you, you, you just say it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you, you know what they're talking about. They don't have the language for it. They don't have the church ism language for it. They don't have the vocabulary for it, but you are an image bearer and those around you can perceive and see it. They don't have the church language to tell you what they're seeing, but they can tell you are different. They don't have the vocabulary for it. I don't know how to describe it in a language that you church people say, but, but there is something about you. There is an aura about you. Uh, there is just an atmosphere you bring when you come into the workplace. Do you carry the image? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you carry the image? Judas stayed for three years with Jesus and yet never caught the image. He never caught the image. He never, somebody says, I was told that on Sunday at church, I thank God. That's right. Because, because, because when you are in proximity with Christ, you must catch the image. There must be something about your long suffering that tells us that you, you, you have encountered Christ. There, there must be something about your speech that tells us that you have encountered Christ. There must be something about the way you respond to life circumstances that must tell us that you have, you have caught the image of Christ. There must be something about the way you carry Carry yourself the way you walk that must tell us that you have caught the image of Christ. The Bible says Judas had to kiss Jesus. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Why? Because all of the disciples looked like Jesus. They talked like Jesus. They moved like Jesus. By this time, Jesus' work was done, which means that he had imparted himself onto his disciples. So much so that he was now confident to leave for them to begin to do the work. Everybody else caught the image of Christ except Judas. Could it be that you could be in the proximity and not catch what God is doing? What God is doing on this prayer broadcast? Could it be that you have, you have been here for the past, for the past six months and yet you have been an observer? Yet you have been sitting in the terrace. Every time after every broadcast, you have a commentary. You, are, you have a commentary about it. You're sitting for coffee with your friends to comment. Comment about the, 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 the decibels of the sound when the woman of God was praying. 
commenting about the way the word was preached, commenting about how she, she kept drinking water from a glass. <laughs> Couldn't she just wait until an hour to drink water? Commenting about how, commenting about everything else except catching the impartation and the spirit of prayer. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Could it be that you could be in your family, your fellowship at, at, at your local church and, and you know the cars they drive? You know the places where they, where they stay? You know what kind of clothes they were wearing? But you, you haven't yet caught the image. Could it be that you know everything else, else except what's important? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. But Judas was with Jesus and yet the 11 disciples caught the image of Christ. And yet Judas was the only one that had personal interests to protect that went in with an agenda and that agenda was never it was never it was never bleached it was never bleached out of his heart he kept his agenda he could have gone in with the wrong reasons but for you to come out with the wrong reason some of you you went into your local churches because there was a beautiful girl in there some of some of you you went to church because there was a person you wanted to do business with and you heard that they went to a particular church and you decided that you were going to go undercover as a believer so that you could befriend them and so they could give you business. I, I know you might have gone in with the wrong reasons, Judas, but couldn't you catch the image while you were at it? Couldn't you catch the spirit of the house while you were in it? Couldn't you catch the vision of the man named Jesus while he was speaking? Couldn't you see the miracles and repent and catch the image of Christ? Some of you, you went into the local church because you were now done with the clubs. Hello, somebody. You were now done with the clubs and you were looking for, you were looking for marriage. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Do you know that there are people who are busy somewhere and when they're done, they're going to come to church looking for a spouse. That's why we say you must pray when you are in church because you don't know who's there. Judas was one of the 12 disciples and yet he never caught the image. There are some people right now who are busy. And, and the plan and the strategy is that after they finish being busy, they're going to come to church. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but there are people who are busy at places. When they are done, they will come to church. That's their final stop. And there you are. You don't know how to discern. You don't know how to catch someone's spirit. You don't know how to discern the, the image of Christ on somebody. You don't know how to hear God concerning your friendships and your relationships. Somebody once said these days the, 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 the thieves are meeting each other in church. The, 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 the prostitute and the drug dealer, they are meeting each other in church. Because both of them think they are clever. <laughs> the, 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 the swindler and the fraudster are meeting each other in church because all of them, the strategy is church is the last resort. But God says, oh, let me tell you something. You're, you're about to learn something new. <laughs> you're about to learn something new today. So now all of a sudden, the, the, the Judas, uh, the, the, the female Judas and the male Judas are meeting each other in church. That's why you can never underestimate the power of prayer. You can never underestimate the power of prayer. Isn't it beautiful prayer, governors, that before Luke chapter 22, verse 47, Jesus is coming out of prayer with his disciples. It is almost as though he, he was preparing his heart for what was about to happen. Prayer, governors, prayer prepares your heart for difficult moments in the corridors of destiny. Prayer gives you spiritual stamina to stand when difficult moments come in the corridors of your assignment. Prayer 
gives you a God perspective. Jesus, isn't it strange that when Jesus says uh, to Judas, uh, Ju Judas, is it by, uh, uh, by a kiss that you betray the son of God? He didn't shout it out. Uh, the Bible says that Judas hugged Jesus and kissed him. And, uh, and when you see many of the movies that are enacted, they're even, they're, they're, there is a, there is a, 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 a there is a, 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 a perspective that you get where Jesus tells Judas, I see what you are doing, but I can't shout it out because there is also an assignment that I need to accomplish through your betrayal. So Jesus didn't shout it out. He didn't say, Judas, is it by a kiss you betray the son of man? He whispers it into Judas ears that I know what you are doing. Prayer gives a man God perspective. It gives a man God's perspective. Prayer aligns a man, a man's heart to the will of God. Jesus says, not my will be done, but your will be done. Prayer helps a man to stand at the center of their call in God, even when it's difficult, even if it's unto death. That's why you, ca you can't minimize the importance of prayer. So these days, people are, are in local churches and both of them are not image bearers. They don't know how to pray. They just came to look for a wife. They don't know how to pray. They just came looking for a business partner. They don't know how to pray. They just came for people to swindle. They don't know how to pray. They're done with their lifestyle and they just think that this is the place where you look for unassuming uh, 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 victims. And they meet their own like. They meet also people who are, who are not image bearers, but who are good pretenders, who wear a good mask. So the Bible says in verse 48, but Jesus asked Judas, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? Who? Verse 49 says, those around Jesus saw what was happen was about to happen and said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servants of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. The Bible says, then he said to the priests and temple officers and elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as you would against an outlaw? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour. This hour belongs to you and to the power of darkness that you may do as you please. Who am I speaking to this morning? I don't know about you, but I want to be an image bearer. I want to be an image bearer. And it's a lifelong desire and appetite that every Christian should have. There was a reason a kiss was used to betray Jesus. A kiss was the easiest way to identify Jesus because Judas understood that if you, if you tried to describe Jesus, there could have been ambiguity because every single one of the disciples had caught the image of Christ. And prayer governors, this morning, I want us to pray a very simple prayer. You guys are about to go to church. I, prom I promise you, your pastors are going to unpack this better than anybody. They're going to unpack this, this uh, Good Friday message better than, than me, better than anybody. But I wanted to come this morning and I, I, and I really sensed that God's heartbeat was, do you have the image of Christ? I know you've been going to church, but have you allowed me to mold you into my image? I know you have been cl in close proximity to miracles, signs, and wonders, but have you allowed me to, 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 to brand you with my image? Have you caught the image of Christ? Have you caught, have you caught the image of Christ? Have you caught the spirit of the season? Who am I speaking to this morning? Have you, have you caught the image of Christ? Uh, uh, Jesus' life was, was not taken from him. I want us to fully understand that he freely gave away his life. Jesus, if Jesus had not relinquished him, his life, he would have not been, they would have not been able to take him. 
And I believe that even as we're in this season, this must become a symbol to our lives. Our lives must be given away. I need somebody this morning to give away their lives into the capable hands of the Messiah. I need somebody to give their lives into the capable hands of the maker. I want you to say, Lord, I relinquish my life for you to mold it. I want to be an image bearer because do you know that you need to give away your life? You need to give, you need to relinquish your life to Christ for him to mold it. We see this because there are so many people that go to church and then you find out that they are a part of a, nas a, 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 a nas nas nationwide fraud. We have a situation of a certain doctor in South Africa. She was known as a woman of God. Always used to post scriptures on Instagram. Was known in her circles. She's actually a medical doctor. She was known in her circles as a woman after God's own heart. People used to call her woman of God. But we are, find, we are finding out in this season uh, 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 that she was involved in so many fraudulent activities to the point where she used her doctor privileges uh, uh, to take um, dead bodies out of a mortuary that would then be used uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an escape in prison of one of her lovers that was in prison. So people in prison, there was a fire that broke out in prison. And this man apparently was declared dead because uh, he died in the fire. No, it was a body that this particular woman of God, doctor, took, sourced out from a mortuary, signed because she had doctor privileges. And they took this body and they threw it in the prison, took away the prisoner. The prisoner escaped. And now uh, the body was now declared the dead body of the prisoner himself. But the prisoner was now out, now living with the woman of God in a mansion in one of the posh uh, areas of this, kind, of this, of this particular uh, town. Woman of God. It still feels like a movie, Buthe. Up until today, I, I, there's some, some parts of that story that are wild to me. They are so wild to me. I can't believe it. And we are told that the, uh, my husband is actually, I was actually reading a, a book about this. They released a book about it. My husband bought it. And there's actually now a documentary on Shawmax. And what we learn is that people called her a woman of God. People called her a woman of God. She had created a facade like Judas in the public domain where people actually called her a disciple. And yet she had never caught the image of Christ. She never caught the image of Christ. I can understand that maybe you went into church because you thought there were many people that were gullible. Some people think that church people are gullible and they're, and they're easy victims. I can understand that maybe you stepped into your local church with that narrative. But Jesus even allows sick people to step into the local church. But the problem is when you stay in the local church and you continue to not catch the image. That's right. And she was married too. Have you caught the image? Prayer governors, it requires a, a relinquished life. It requires a life that freely relinquishes itself to Christ to mold you into his image. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ is such a gentleman. Uh, uh, he's not going to impose himself on you. One thing I've learned about a man that I respect so much is that you will never do to a man that, oh, that, that which a man doesn't give you permission to do to them. Or else it becomes, it, it becomes a completely different thing altogether. It becomes an, a, a grape without the G. Or it becomes a, 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 an abusive incident, right? It, it's now a, a completely different dynamic altogether. But under normal circumstances, a man has will over himself. You have will over yourself. And the father this morning, the heartbeat of the father as we're about to pray, is that you relinquish your life for him to implant and embed his image on you. There was a reason why a kiss was used to betray Jesus. All of the disciples looked like him. All of the disciples carried his image. My question to you this morning is, have you allowed Jesus into your life to the point where you now carry his image? I want us to just pray this morning. 
Our first prayer point is, Father, make me more like you. Father, make me more like you. There's so many areas of my life that need you, uh, that need you. Just make me more like you. Make me more like you on this Good Friday as we celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. Make me more like you. Make me into the image of Jesus Christ. Make me into your image. I want to have an appetite to know who you were so that I can become more like you. I want to have an appetite to know how you spoke so I could speak like you. I want to have an appetite to, to, to know how you responded to life circumstances so I could be more like you. Lord, make me more like you you. I want you to begin to lift up your voice from wherever you're connecting from. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We honor you and we appreciate you, King of glory. This morning, we learned about the story of Judas and we learned how he betrayed Jesus, G Jesus with a kiss. Father, we're coming to you in the place of prayer this morning and we're asking that you would make us more like you. We're asking, Father, this morning that by your mercy and by your grace that you could begin to truly mold us into the image of Jesus Christ. And Father, we recognize that it takes surrender. We recognize that there is a level of surrender that is going to be required from us. We recognize that there is a relinquishing that's going to be required from us. I'm praying this morning from pe for people who don't know how to relinquish power and who don't know how to relinquish control. Life has had them in instances where the only place where they feel powerful is when they are in control. But this morning, King of Glory, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you teach us and you train us once again how to relinquish and surrender our lives into your hands so you can mold us. There are many people in life that maybe took advantage of us because we gave them control over our lives. They could have been people that betrayed us because we gave them control over our lives. They could have been people uh, 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 that, that took our lives and made us victims because we gave them control over our lives. But this morning, we let go of the fear that we have carried that if any, at any time in your life you give control to somebody, that they will misuse it. This morning in prayer, Father, we pray that uh, any fear that the world has instilled on us, any fear that the world has embedded into our spirits, that we cannot give you control to mold us. Father, right now we relinquish it in prayer. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but you have given us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And so, Father, this morning we receive peace in our hearts to relinquish our lives into your capable hands. Mold us into your image make us into your image create us into your image may we become a template of that which you have already enacted and 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 resembled before us a father make us into the cast of who christ is in the matchless name of jesus make us into your form make us into your image may we truly be known as image bearers in the name of jesus may we walk in the shape in the form and in the fashion of who you are in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. And this morning, we, we, we release a new surrender. We relinquish a new surrender on this altar of prayer. Uh, we say, Father, as you please, mold us. In the name of Jesus. And we know that it will take sacrifice. Uh, uh, and we know that it will take radical trust. Uh, and, and we know uh, uh, it requires us trusting, uh, tr trusting that we are partnering with a God that can be trusted. We know it requires knowledge of who this God is that we are giving our lives to. And so this morning, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are giving us a new revelation, a new awakening, a new understanding of who you are so that we can trust you with our lives. So we can truly relinquish our lives into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Make us more like you. Our second prayer point, prayer governors, is Lord, when they see me, let them see you. Uh, somebody said something beautiful. They said, uh, 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 for some of you, you are the only Bible other people will ever read. 
Some people will never open a Bible in their whole lives, but they will look at your life and they will know there was an image bearer. There was an, a, a, a woman that, that said she was a Christian and she was kind and she was, and she was loving and she was understanding and she was a good listener and she was non-judgmental and she was, uh, 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 they will, they will see Christ through you. So I want us to pray in the next minute. We're just going to say, father, when they see me, let them see you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we step into our corporate jobs, as we step into our ministries, as we step into our businesses, as we step into our places of assignment, there are some people that will never open a Bible. There are some people that will never uh, uh, fully understand who you are until they see us and they know that there's something that we carry that they don't. And so, Father, we pray this morning that may we be such powerful image bearers. May the image of Christ be fully reflective on our lives so, such in such a way that when they see us, may they be able to see you. May they be able to see your loving power. Uh, may they be able to see your hand in our lives. May they be able to see your image on us. And Father, may, may we be the only Bible that some people might ever get to read. Let our lives be a reflection of who you are. Let our lives be a reflection of what we have learned from you. Let our lives be a reflection of your image in the name of Jesus. Make us more like you. And Father, there are people going through very difficult circumstances right now. And, and, and they are tempted. They are tempted to act out of character. They are tempted to choose decisions that don't reflect you. They are tempted to walk in a way that doesn't honor you. They are tempted to do things, Father, that won't display a full image of who you are. But Father, this morning I just pray. I pray in the name of Jesus that may you give them the courage to walk the narrow path. May you give them the grace to walk the path that people, few people walk, that the least people walk. May you give them the grace to walk the path that is difficult so that when people see them, they see you. In the name of Jesus, may people be able to say, I saw how you went through that situation and you handled yourself with grace. You handled yourself with honor. You handled yourself with integrity. You handled yourself with courage. You handled yourself like a believer. And I knew that it could be done. I pray in the name of Jesus that you hold up and you lift up someone's hands that are feeble and weak in this season. Uh, uh, that has been battling and grappling to holding onto your image. I pray that when they see them, may they see you. People that are going through difficult marriages, people that are going through difficult relationships right now, people that are going through different corporate journeys right now that, that are tempted to step out of character. But I thank you, King of Glory, that the image of Christ in itself comes with the grace that is required for us to act like you would act, to respond like you would respond in the name of Jesus. I pray that may we be a, a billboard of your grace. May we be a billboard of your mercy. May we be a billboard of what Christ looks like in this world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our third prayer point, prayer governors, is Father, give us strength to pay the price for our own path. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had an opportunity. He had an opportunity to utilize the power he had to walk out of the scenario and make a decision that, you know what, maybe I'm not the right person for the job. He had an opportunity to say no to dying for our sins. He had an opportunity to step out of it at any given point in time. The Bible says that even while he was on the cross, he could have called a legion of angels to help him. He could have called a legion of angels to help him, uh, to help him carry the pain, to help him carry the weight of the world, to help him carry the sin of the world that he had on his shoulders while he stood on that cross. But I need somebody this morning to say, Lord, I have my own cross to carry. It, it's not Jesus cross because I wouldn't, I would have never carried it. I would have never had the power to carry it. It's not the cross that he carried. He already carried the ultimate cross. He already paid the ultimate price. So whatever you are asking of me, it is reasonable. It is my reasonable act, act of service. Some of you, God is calling you to relocate so you can do ministry. Some of you, God is, is calling you to step into a job. Maybe it pays a little less than what you earn right now. But it is a job that is in, in alignment uh, uh, with, with kingdom. It is an alignment with God's value. Some of you, God wants you to step out of a, a company that does, that is not in sync with what he has called you for. 
Prayer governors, I remember there was a season when I was looking for a job. I had been six months out of a job, unemployed and desperately now searching because now my savings had run out. And I remember specifically uh, getting a, a, a an interview. And I got an interview, number one, at, a, at, a, at, a, at an alcohol brewing company. I'm not trying to shade any place where people work. I'm talking about my own journey with the Lord. And I want you to understand that I was a woman who understood that she was called into ministry. I had always known that I had always known that this was my path. And I, I got an opportunity to go for an interview at this was an alcohol brewing company. Number one. And number two, if you are in South Africa, I want you to Google this one. I want you to Google a South African alcohol brewing company that has the word devil in it. You have never been so desperate until you go to an interview that number one is not in alignment with the values that you profess. Hello, somebody. I, I wouldn't have even had the courage to tell somebody that I was working at that company if I had gotten the job. But yet still, I, I took a shower. <laughs> I took a shower and, and I took a, I took an Uber. I, I don't know if it was an Uber. I think it was an Uber. I took an Uber and I, and I, and I went there. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I want you to know that there's going to be opportunities in life to compromise. That's right. This company is called devils something. There we go. There we go. I didn't say any name, but yes, yes, yes. If you're a South African, you can Google this particular company. It's a brewing company and it actually has the name devil in it. It was a company which if I had worked at, I would have never even been able to put on my CV. <laughs> I would have never been able to even put it on my CV because I wasn't proud of what I was doing, but I was so desperate for a job. And I remember coming out of that job interview and going back home. And I remember an immense silence in my apartment. And I remember God saying, are you willing to go that low? Are you, uh, 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 are, are you willing to go that low, Melody? Are you that desperate? Do you genuinely believe that I won't come, come, for, come, for, come through for you? Do you genuinely believe that I won't come through for you to a point where you are willing you are you are willing to you you are you are willing to work against your witness you are you are willing to destroy your witness the only thing you have in ministry prayer governors is your integrity <laughs> once your integrity is gone you can do all sorts of gymnastics we see them these days online doing gymnastics after their integrity is gone you know changing branding changing the name of the ministry changing the name of the you now you are i don't know you're changing the way you speak these days you're changing the way you write your posts there is no such thing as rebranding in ministry once your integrity is gone it is gone i'm talking to somebody this morning who is desperate, who is in a desperate situation where you are tempted to, to come out of the image of Christ. Ah, yeah, 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 don't do it. I remember, I remember experiencing an encounter in my house after that interview. And I heard the Lord say, is this how low you are willing to go? There are times when God has to bring you to yourself. He has to, he has to make you face yourself to, to show you how you can, how desperate you can be. And, and that's right. That's right. That's right. I didn't say it, but you said it. <laughs> I didn't say it, but they said it. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and the salary was good. Oh my goodness. The salary was so good. And I remember, I remember going on my knees and praying that God don't, don't make them give me the job. I let it go. I let it go. This is, this is an opportunity I'm willing to let go because the interview actually went very well. <laughs> the interview went stellar. Have you ever been in an interview and you say to yourself, uh, 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 you start preparing your wardrobe. You start putting uh, the first week of uh, outfits because the interview went so well. And I remember the Lord saying to me, is this how low you are willing to go? Image bearers. 
Do you know you could be in proximity with Christ and yet still not carry his image? And there are opportunities God will open up for you to see yourself. And in that opportunity, God allowed me to see myself. And there was a certain level of consecration that happened in that prayer after that interview where I said, God, I'm not where I think I am. Work in me. Make me die even further. Make me die even further. There is still a part of me that needs to die because clearly when I'm put in a corner, hello somebody, when I'm put in a corner, I falter. When enough pressure, pressure is applied over my life, just like Judas, when enough money is put on the table, I can, 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 I can sell Jesus. Ooh, somebody on this comment section, the Lord is ministering to you. If enough money was put on the table, if, if, if enough money was put on the table, what are you willing to do? I know we judge Judas, but if enough money was put on the table, what are you willing to do? If enough money was put on the table, what are you willing to do? So our prayer is, Lord, give me strength to pay the price for my own path. I knew exactly where God was taking me in ministry, but I was in a season where I didn't know where the rent was going to come from. I didn't know where the rent was going to come from. And the moment I, I, I prayed that prayer, the Lord began to open up the right doors for me. Some of you, I want you to know that when you relinquish the thing you think you have, I want you to know that the, when you relinquish that opportunity that is compromised immediately, the right opportunities will begin to gravitate towards you. Your, your prayer in the season is God give me strength to pay the price for my own path. Give me the strength to carry my own cross. Jesus could have said, listen, father, change your plans. Change your plans. Send an angel to die for this people. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He had the, he had the legal jurisdiction to do it here the legal authority as part of the godhead to make a decision and say listen I, I think it's now time to send an angel to do the job jesus said i'm willing to carry the weight of the sins of the world on my shoulders because i understand that there is a price one must pay for their own path Ooh, what path are you walking what price have you paid be careful walking with people that have never paid a price be careful listening to people that have never paid a price. Be careful talking to somebody that never tells you a story of any price they have paid for what they have. No price you have paid for it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why we worship him. That's why we have given our lives to him. That's why we have soared our lives into his kingdom. That's why we work for him the work, the way we do. That's why we serve him the way we do because he has given his life for ours. He has paid the price. There is a spiritual, there is a spiritual currency, a value that a minister receives for paying a price. Some of you, your ministries are, are, are not walking in power, not walking in authority, not walking in the miraculous, not walking with any testimony. Why? Because you have not paid any price. The branding is good. The color schemes are good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guests you're inviting to the events are good. Who am I speaking to? But there is no price that you have actually paid for this thing. No wonder. No wonder. It looks like it's grown on one event and on the next event it's, it goes down. Uh, when we really look on the ground, there is no actual growth on the ground. There is no actual testimonies of lives changed. Why? Because you are not paying the price for your part. We're going to pray a small prayer. Father, help me to pray the help me to pay the price for my path. Help me to pay the price for my path as I as I go through today and understand that Good Friday is the day you paid the price for your assignment. That it is the day you paid the price for your calling. It is the day you paid uh, the price for your own set and chosen path. Help me to pr pay the price for my path. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray.
Oh, thank you, King of Glory, that this morning you are releasing unusual and uncommon strength to every person on this broadcast that needs strength. Strength to keep walking the narrow path. Strength to keep running. Strength to keep fighting. Strength to keep walking a, a, a journey that is commendable uh, to an image bearer. Strength to not compromise. Oh, Father, this morning, we cry out for mercy over our ministries. We cry out for mercy over our businesses. We cry out for mercy over our places of assignment. We cry out and we long for your grace in the name of Jesus. Your grace to help us on this journey. Help us to carry our own crosses. Every person has their own unique cross to carry in whatever place you have planted them. I pray this morning that a release of new strength is being given to every person that requires this, requires it. People that were crying at night because they wanted to do right by you, but they were being placed in a corner uh, uh, under the pressures of this world. Precious to say no. Precious to give up on the assignment. Precious to say this is not my job to do. I pray in the name of Jesus this morning that you are sending us new strength to pay the price for our own path just like our Lord Jesus did. On that cross, he didn't have to. He could have sent a, a legion of angels to die for the sins of the world, but he stood and he paid the price for his own path. I pray in the name of Jesus that as image bearers, that may we be able in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name to emulate your example. I want to make a prophetic declaration this morning that the Lord is giving somebody, he's giving someone shoulders that are broad enough to carry the burden of their own assignment. I want to repeat that. God this morning is giving you broad enough shoulders to carry the burden of your assignment. If it, be, if it means being betrayed, if it means being mocked, if it means being whipped, if it means going on the cross in between uh, two thieves, being categorized, being placed in, 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 in spaces where you would have never thought you would be placed in, being characterized in a certain way. Some of you, your journey is going to be filled with heartbreak, but I pray in the name of Jesus that may God give you shoulders broad enough to carry the burden of your own assignment. Because let me tell you something, every assignment has a burden. It doesn't matter how glamorous it, we make it look. It has a burden. And by the way, our first Hosting Heaven episode, Hosting Heaven podcast episode is now out. And I remember somebody was watching this video and they said, woman of God, it looks so stellar. It looks so prime. It looks so beautiful. And I say, there is a price to pay for every ministry. Nobody will tell you what that day looked like. Nobody will tell you how much it took us for us to just uh, to, to gather the resources that were required to bring you those episodes. Every path has a price to pay. And I'm praying and I'm prophesying this morning that God is giving somebody broad enough shoulders to carry the burden of their own assignment. In the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you. If you're on YouTube, the link is in the description box below. Go check out our first episode. Please show us some love. The way you love me on this morning prayers, please go love on that uh, podcast. Uh, the first episode is actually my own personal testimony. It's one of my uh, youngest, earliest testimonies about an encounter with Christ. And I'm going to be sharing and unpacking so many different testimonies and encounters of visitation that I've had with the Lord. But I thought that that one, that one was the first one. So uh, it was a nice way to just start. So... Um, um, that's something to look, I look forward to on this good Friday, the hosting heaven podcast, first episode now out on Spotify, on YouTube. Um, and our handle is the same house of hosting, hosting heaven podcast, hosting heaven podcast. The link will be in the description box below. Um, um, and on YouTube, the link will be, uh, in our community channel on the usual channel hosting house of hosting heaven. Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyways, prayer governors, 
this morning has been amazing. I'm going to allow you an opportunity to spend time with your family. Please enjoy the time that you're spending in the presence of the Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God gives you the grace to surrender your life fully. Because a life that is not fully surrendered in the presence of the Lord, it will never be molded. Hello, somebody. God bless you, Mali. May God increase where you have taken. A, a, a life that is not fully surrendered into his hands will never be molded. I wonder what would have happened if I had gotten that job. I would have been well, handsomely paid. I would have had a nice job that I would have been not proud to put on my CV because of the company and because of what it stands for. I would have never been able to even testify that I worked at that company. And some people might have even would have even saw it now. Do you know that there are some things where the enemy is is the enemy is not he's not setting you up for now. He's setting you up for 10 years later. Have you ever seen politicians running for office? And while they're running for office, all of a sudden the, the strippers from five years ago start coming out. The sex tapes from three years ago start coming out. The women that claim that they were uh, graped from 10 years ago start coming out. The people that claim that they were at a club with you and they did lines with you start coming out. The enemy is strategic prayer governors. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to carry the image of Christ even when it is painful. You continue to carry the image of Christ even when it is a burden. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes it's going to cost you a paycheck. Sometimes it's going to cost you so much. There are some people who can't even tell us the things carrying the image of Christ has cost them. But I promise you, God owes no man. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And so I, wa I want you to be encouraged. Whatever price you are paying, just like Jesus. Jesus paid the price for the glory that was set before him. May there be a glory in your story in the name of Jesus. I want someone to prophetically type it in the comment section. May there be a glory in my story in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing some of you coming back with testimonies concerning your story. I'm seeing some of you sharing your testimony uh, about how, what you went through and other people feeling inspired to continue to hold on to the image of Christ. I'm seeing some of you, the Lord raising you because of the sacrifices that you have made in secret. I'm seeing some of you, God elevating you in miraculous supernatural ways. I'm seeing a wind of lifting happening in your life because you have decided to hold on to the image of Christ. Even when it was difficult, even when it was painful, even when you felt like giving up, you said, not my will, but your will be done. There is going to be glory in your story in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory that was set before him. He didn't consider his life didn't consider his reputation as something to cling on to. But he, he laid his life for ours. And as we celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, I just need somebody to say, Lord, make me more like you. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Friend, governors, I love you so very much. I'm so, so grateful that 769 of you woke up on a, on a good Friday and you decided to just do this morning prayer with us before you go to church. I know that there's some people who join us that don't even have a local church. It could be because of church hurt. I'm just praying and prophesying over your life that the Lord is going to give you the uh, grace to connect with a Bible-believing church uh, before the end of... the before. Before, before the next Good Friday. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, I pray that this time next year, God is going to give you a beautiful Bible-loving church uh, that is led by a God-fearing a, a, a minister of the gospel that preaches the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ that is not afraid to call you out of your shenanigans. Hello, somebody that doesn't care how much, how much tithe you pay <laughs> that will tell you like it is. Because some people, depending on how much tithe you pay, uh, when, when when the minister sees that there is the highest tithe payer in the in the in the od audience, they begin to change their tone and their voice. I pray that God gives you a minister who loves your soul, 
who gives you a tight word, but a right word. Hello, somebody who gives you an uncomfortable word, but a word that saves you. Uh, sometimes people have to, some people have to offend your flesh so that they can save your soul. I need somebody to type that in the comment section. God sent me people that, that are willing to offend my flesh to save my soul. So I understand that there's some of you uh, that are going through church hurt, that are going through pains, you're going through disappointments, and this Easter is not the same for you. But I just pray that you connect yourself and you plug yourself into the spirit of the season. Just remember Jesus Christ and the sacrifice paid for you and for my sins. And just remember that sacrifice and just say, Lord, make me more like you. Make me more like you. Uh, as some of you, if you're not going to church, I just wanna, I just wanna encourage you to open your Bible and read it. Read it from from the time Jesus is crucified to the time He rises again. In the next three days, spend some time in there. Light up a candle. Uh, grab yourself a nice meal. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Just sit in silence and spend time with Jesus. Amen and amen. That's right. God will, God will sometimes offend your flesh to save your soul. He will send you people that will offend your flesh. You, you will come off the live broadcast and you'll say, ah, today I didn't like the woman of God. <laughs> today I, I didn't like her. And you'll come back tomorrow and you'll feel better. Why? Because we, sometimes we've got, we've got to offend the flesh to save the soul. That's right. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Prayer governors, I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Happy, happy Easter. Um, congratulations to everybody. And somebody was asking, do we have our crossover? As per usual. As per usual. So we're coming here on the Sunday. This is Friday the 29th. I believe that... Um, the 31st is a Sunday. So Sunday evening, we are coming for crossover into the month of April. I'm excited in my spirit. Um, it will be, it's beautiful because many of you are not going to work on Monday uh, because it's a holiday. So let's spend Sunday evening in the presence of the Lord as we step into the new month. As always, as always, as always. Amen and amen. So see you prayer governors on Sunday evening for crossover night into the month of of um april in jesus mighty and wonderful name and remember our hosting heaven podcast uh episode one is now out show us some love show us some love show us some love just as soon as you come off this broadcast either go on spotify and listen to that uh, session it's literally less than 20 minutes long it's my personal testimony um, um of an encounter i had with the lord at a very young age and i pray that it stirs something in you stirs the hunger in you our second episode is already ready for broadcasting so you're going to be seeing it next friday uh live next friday in jesus mighty and wonderful name um, um, and next week, beginning of next week, we are filming more episodes. So we have the ball running. Please share it with somebody that you know uh, needs it. If you guys are a community of girls and you're always on these morning prayer sessions and your prayer governors, please take the link of the YouTube platform, YouTube, post it in those WhatsApp groups that you guys talk, post it in, in the places where you guys meet, post it and say, hey, sis, have you seen the new episode of the podcast is now out? And please leave us a message. Leave us a comment in the comment section. Just say uh, uh prayer governor prayer governor is pr i'm a prayer governor here or a prayer governor has arrived or we're watching you know uh prayer governors here just something in the comment section please keep engaging with our podcast and don't forget to subscribe to our platform because we actually have a new youtube channel called hosting event podcast uh so uh, we're trying to grow that platform um if 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 a couple of thousands of you could just go and show us love on that platform would really appreciate it because we're trying to build uh, a, 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 a platform for encounters so that we can maintain the platform for prayer uh, as it is. So let's see how that works out. God bless you, everybody. Love you so very much. Somebody says, I'm following you on YouTube also. That's wonderful. So I want you to check out our new YouTube channel, House of Hosting. He it's called Hosting Heaven po Podcast. Hosting Heaven Podcast. If you're not a visual person, I encourage you to check out the visuals. But if you're not a visual person, we're also on Spotify and the episode is also now out on Spotify, Hosting Heaven Podcast. Links will be in the description box below or if you're on tiktok write in our bio amen god bless you so much prayer governors happy happy good friday